Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another Spotlight video. Well, Spotlight shines one of my favourite games on my Atari ST. And that is Supercars. A game I recently picked up. An easy sum of £7.50. The game was published by Gremlin Graphics back in 1990. And unfortunately at the time, I didn't buy this game, which was a shame really. So when I eventually got around to buying it in 94, I loved it. I actually played it for hours on end. The game was developed by Magnetic Fields, who brought us the Lotus Trilogy, amongst many other different games. It was programmed by Sean Southern, Dave Makin, um, graphics done by Jeremy Smith and Andrew Morris, and the music was done by the late Ben Dalgleish, which got some cracking tunes in there as well. This particular copy set me back £7.50 off of eBay, probably about a couple of months ago now. Offered the chap 10 quid for it, he declined. It's lucky he got 750 because I hadn't bid on it myself. It probably would have gone for about five quid. And the Amiga version can go for substantially more, probably sort of like 30 quid. Whereas the sequel can go for even more. Box art is pretty box standard, really, but very memorable. That sort of gremlin graphics design sort of box is really very colourful. Screenshots on the back, I'm assuming mostly from. 16-bit games. I know it came out on the Sinclair Spectrum, but I don't know if it came out on any other 8-bit systems. But yeah, not bad condition this one, not bad at all really for £7.50, quite pleased with it. Got a bit of concaving going on there in the old uh, on the top box there. And the Atari ST sticker placed nicely on top of the Amiga. Um, the Amiga one isn't a sticker, it's actually printed on the box, so if you're uh, one of those ones, one of those chaps who likes to Deface boxes. You can quite easily turn this into an Amiga box. And inside there, you've got a very thin instruction manual and a disc. I'm not sure if the Amiga version comes on two discs, to be honest. I can't remember. But the manual is nice and thin, which is great. Get straight into the game and play. But yeah, so I'm glad to have this game in the collection. I've got the Amiga version. The Amiga version is very similar in many ways, but graphically more superior. Definitely got better sound and music, and in the game I think you can have music and sound at the same time with the SD version, unfortunately, you can have one or the other. But the actual game mechanics are still the same. So it's certainly worth, probably better value for money on the Atari ST if you're going to start collecting or buying this game. But yeah, that's it, so let's crack on with the game. Now this game, has, unfortunately, has a tendency to crash a lot. I first did this video a little while ago, and it crashed after about the eighth race. Unfortunately, the this time I've done it again, it's crashed after the third race. You're going to get some idea of how it plays. Luckily for you, it's not for very long, about 12, 13 minutes. I've left some Amiga footage as well, so you can get a sort of comparison between the two 16-bit machines. That's enough of that. Let's crack on and let's have a race. So we have it, supercars. Um, yeah, like I said, a game I never played up until about 1994. Once I discovered it, I absolutely loved it. Sort of game I love, really, those top-down driving games. So yeah, quite a nice, uh, 
the introduction sequence there. As you can see your three types of sports cars. Driving behind the uh, teenagers there. Let's crack on with the game. Ah, another thing as well. I don't know what it was with 1990, but there's plenty of news readers. And plenty of rock bands and sort of introduction sequences of games. We have Nancy and whatever his name is. They just generally shout out the fastest laps. And, uh, well, yeah, the winners of each race. Nice crack on the game. Certainly changed my name from Fred. Can't imagine that being a very popular name, even in 1990. Yeah, the good thing is you put your name in the once and uh, you ain't got to do it again. The layout is identical to the Amiga version. As you can see before your very eyes, you've got the sales offices. You go and buy your cars from or upgrades. Got a garage to buy your uh, replacement engine parts and body parts and all the rest of it. Down the bottom there, you've got your cash, start off with 5,000 quid. The car type. And sort of damage indicators really for the four main elements of the car. So we're going to start off on track nine because I tend to find if I start off on the more difficult tracks early doors, it's easier than trying to tackle them later on <clears throat> in a slower car with more going on. Here we go. The track's designs are pretty cool, to be honest. Get your finger, button, finger on the button there to accelerate. Yeah, the, the track designs are not too bad actually. It's nine tracks altogether, and they repeat themselves once you completed the first sort of cycle, really. At the moment, there's no obstacles in the road whatsoever, so it's a pretty cool drive in the park. As you can probably tell as well, the graphics are slightly less detailed than on the Amiga. Probably due to the reduced colour palette of the ST. The gameplay is the same. The game mechanics are identical to its Amiga cousin. Like I said before as well, the Amiga version can cost substantially more. In terms of gameplay, the ST version is just as playable. It's one of those games as well, when you play it, the difficulty curve goes from like quite easy, as you can see. Friggin' insane, quite quickly. Now, obviously you have to win the race. The more you win the race, the more money you get. Or the more races you win, the more money you have, which you can upgrade your car. You need to upgrade your car quite sharpish or you'll never keep up with the competition. As you can see, speed indicator, my car doesn't even reach halfway. So my car is bloody slow. First place out of four laps, four out of five, and you can see the actual damage indicators depleting as I go around the track. Obviously, the more you crash, the more it's going to affect the body. I'm not quite sure what affects the tyres, it might just be general wear and tear. But yeah, about to lap this dude. When you kind of go around the tracks once and get back to this one again, sort of the next time round, it's a lot more difficult. Music's very good as well. Of Ben Dalglish. Cracking throughout the actual game. I love it. So what I'm going to try and do is just go through the nine tracks as quickly as possible so you get an idea of what the game's all about. There we go. Quite like this little sequence as well, to be honest. Average speed there, 92 miles an hour. So I might chance it and go for track eight. Bear in mind my engine is like about halfway. I think track eight's slightly shorter, so I might just be all right. Or I might not be. Only time will tell. I'm not sure how many in-game tunes there are, because there's quite a few. Must be at least half a dozen. As you might have noticed as well, there's no music and sound in the ST version. 
So the Amiga version has them both. Amalgamated. There you go. First obstacle. Oil slick. As the game progresses, you just get more and more of that sort of thing on the road. First lap down. I need to keep an eye on my bloody uh, damage meter here. First place. At the moment, you'll sort of see every car as the same model. But as the game progresses, you start to see the introduction of more faster, sophisticated cars. It's alright for a little while, but after like you leave it too long, you will not win a race. And if you don't win a race, or you come sort of second or third, your prize money will not enable you, or not be enough to enable you to upgrade your car something faster and in that case you're pretty shafted problem is with the control method you keep your finger on the button to uh, accelerate and move it bloody hurts your finger after a while nice, you just, well, a nice responsive game as well I do like it it's an excellent game I've got to say Yeah, first four or five sort of races, really, you'll do quite well. It's, it's pretty easy. But obviously, the faster your car is, the less traction you got as well. So you end up skidding off the flipping road. There we go. Track eight completed. But what I try and do is I try and go and buy a car, or buy an upgrade, rather than keep going to upgrade the tyres, etc. Um, but I thought you got a negotiate with a canny salesman here he is hello there I hear you want to buy a car which type do you want so I go for the natural upgrade to the one I've already got right then I can advance you 27 grand on your old car in part exchange a bargain at 82,000 pounds I only got 72 grand so I'm going to have a haggle like fuck or uh, go and get some bloody body parts. Okay, I'll pay 82 grand for the car. I don't suppose you give me the car. Give me the car. Won't you take less? How much? You look like someone called Steve. That's a good one. Ah, ah. Okay. I suppose you give me the car. That's what he says. Dead right, turkey. Let's say 83 grand. So he's just made the bloody car more expensive. Extras included. What do you want? A shirt off my back. I'll teach you not to be so greedy. Get out and don't come back. So that is my chance to buy a new car. Gone, unfortunately. So that means I've got to pop to the garage. Spend nearly five grand on engine. 1500 on fuel. It's a fucking expensive car. And two and a half grand on tyres. You see what I mean? That's ten grand gone, pretty much. Go track seven. It's quite difficult to haggle the guy down, but he does make some rather large concessions if you do it right. I think it's completely random to be honest. As you can see, the lead car there is a different model and it's faster than a heap of crap that I've already got. Stay positive, I should be alright. bit of mud in the road there which slows your car down a little bit whatever that flipping patch is there looks like oil yeah so when you go down to track one track one's a very small track so obviously you use less fuel and all the other body parts kind of uh, sustain themselves a bit longer well, the laps do increase, you get seven or eight lap races. The amount of cars you race against increases. It just becomes rock hard. Another nice little tune there. So yeah, in comparison to the Amiga version, it does lose that atmosphere the Amiga's got. Pumping soundtracks, sound effects going on. 
more shadows on the Amiga version as well, especially on the cars. But like I said before, playability-wise, it's um, just as playable. It's the most important ingredient. So yeah. I'm guaranteed this game probably would have been about £5 cheaper as well. On the SD. It came out on multiple platforms as well. came out on the Spectrum, I think. I'm not sure about the Amstrad and Commodore 64. I'd assume it did. Here we go. That is uh, another race one. Hopefully I can go and buy another car. Average speed again at 91. I think in the past I have made it to the third sort of lap around, really. I was going to try and buy another car again. Once you cock up your chance in here, you can't come back. Good morning. You've come to the right place. So let's try another one of those Neo Raiders, what they're called. So I can buy one outright, as it stands. Or I can use up the rest of my engine, body, fuel and tyre reserves. I could murder a curry. Ah, you would not get away with that now. Great idea. I know a nice little restaurant called the Katmandu. But first, let's sell a car. 75. So I managed to knock 10 grand off the car. A bit controversial. I will take that car for 75 grand. In fact, I should have I should have waited. Should have waited, really, and used the last of my... Uh, yeah, tactically, that one very clever, Paul. But I'll take it for 75 grand. So now I've just paid him 85 grand, really. Right, here we go. So I've got the same car, just faster, marginally. Not quite sure why it crashed. Ugh. Me and these bloody games, I tell you. What I'll do is just conclude. I mean, I'm not going to play it too much because it's much the same. Obviously, the further you progress, the more chance you've got of using things like missiles and turbo boost and all the rest of it. You kind of get the gist of the game. Let's go and cl 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 conclude. Yeah, so to conclude, unfortunately, like I said, it crashed, which is a shame. It was actually not doing too badly there. I wanted to show you what it was like a bit later on, as the race became more manic. Yeah, it's certainly worth picking up this game. It's got plenty of um, life in it, because it, it gets bloody difficult. I never really got that far in it before. I think I've gone sort of around twice, to the point where it is bloody hard. Highly addictive game, one I'd definitely recommend. Yeah, the graphics are pretty sort of run-of-the-mill. Not quite as, I suppose, not quite as a, a graphical achievement as the second one. Its sequel was a lot, a lot better graphically, but it plays really, really well nonetheless. And I do love these top-down racing games, from games like Super Sprint or Roadkill on the Amiga, even GTA on the PC. The old top-down version. APB is another one of my favourites. So yeah, it's not a genre that I see around much anymore, but it's a fantastic game nonetheless, and certainly worth its pennies. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care. Bye for now.